Hey there, this is Woody Wong 76. I want to welcome you guys back to the channel. I've been off for a while from this, uh, but today we're going to make a garden sign. So these go and you can stick it in the soil next to the plants that you may have growing around the place. And don't worry, if you don't know what the plants are you want to make a sign for, I'm going to show you how you can use your phone to identify those. So stay tuned. Okay, so one problem you might be having is maybe you don't know what these plants that are growing around your house, maybe you don't know and you're not aware of what they're called and what they're even named, but you want to make a sign for them. So what we're going to use is I'm going to use a program called Google, uh, I think it's by Google, and it's called Lens, L-E-N-S, Lens, like a camera lens. And I'm going to use that, I'm opening that up, and what you do is you just click the little search button when you have it in frame of the picture, and you can see here now on my screen here on my phone, it has correctly identified this as basil. So that's really cool. So now I know it's called basil. We can go in here and we can get working on our design. Okay. So once you've kind of figured out using the app, or maybe you already knew what plant it was, um, you figured out what the name of your plant is. So now next what we're going to do to make this a little more educational, and it'll, I think it looks way cooler, we're going to actually find out also the scientific name for your plant. Okay, so that's pretty easy to do actually. And you can use whatever search engine you like. I used Google or, you know, I often use DuckDuckGo for a little more um, kind of privacy. But what I do is I, I, I search for it, and then we go to the Wikipedia article on our plant. And then right over here, you can see that this is, zoom in, this is the scientific name. They call it the binomial name. And you can mouse over that and explains what that is. Bi meaning two. You can see it's broken up into two parts. Osimum basilicum. Please excuse me if I don't pronounce that correctly. But I'm going to copy that just for later. All right, so now we're going to go back into our design. And uh, first things first, you need to figure out what the printer that you're going to be using, uh, what that's all about, so, and how big it is, right? We don't want to make a sign that we can't print on the printer we have, right? When I look this up, you can see that my build volume is going to be, now these are in centimeters, so I'll convert them to millimeters, 285 by 153 for the replicator too. You need to know this for your printer, whatever that may be, right? Okay, so now we are going to go to Tinkercad, and we'll create our new design here. And like always, basil garden sign. Call it whatever you like. That doesn't really matter. It's not important. I'm going to switch to a orthograph or uh, yeah, an orthographic view by pressing this right over here. That'll really help make sure that we're getting a good view for design. Um, the other view is really good for seeing it, kind of, you know, but. Before we do anything, though, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let's put that in there. And that was, what was it? 285 by 153, I believe. 285, 285 by 153. And update your grid. And then see the, 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 the grid itself, let's go to top view, it changed to reflect the actual size of my printer, okay? So that's pretty cool. And then if we know that if we work outside of this, then we're, we're in deep trouble. Um, I'm going to go here and I want it solid. And so the first one, the first bit of the text, we're going to delete this. I'm going to change it all caps. I mean, in my opinion, I think that's better to basil. Okay. Um, I kind of like sans. That's my, that's kind of my favorite font on this, uh, on Tinkercad, but you know, you, your mileage may vary, whatever you like. Now, um, I was looking at this, and since I have a really wide printer here that I'm going to be using, I want my sign to be pretty pretty large, you know, as big as I can get it, I guess. And that's up to you. You can kind of change that. So I have this, and this is a digital caliper. And I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, hey, you know what? Six inches, or it's roughly six inches, about 150 millimeters. I'm going to use the text. Now, don't forget, we have to leave... Um, some space with our printer on your printer to have the stake part that goes in the ground that won't have any text on it. I mean, you don't want to bury the text. It would kind of defeat the purpose of your cool little sign. So I'm going to go with 160 millimeters. This might make something that's too big, but that's cool. Remember, the cool thing about this is the more you learn, um, you can always go back and do it again. And that's kind of the design process, in my opinion. That's how it should be. Um, 
it's, it's that ref, like that design process where you try it out, ah, not exactly what I want. And then maybe the next sign you make for some other plant, you'll refine it a little bit. The problem a lot of people have is, is that they want to make it perfect the first time. And then because they don't know how to make it perf the perfect the first time, and of course they don't because they don't have any experience at it, it freezes them and then they end up not making anything at all. And that's terrible. So give yourself some permission to screw up the first one. And you know what? Especially, especially if you're using PLA, filament is cheap, right? So, you know, don't let, uh, my advice is, is don't let not knowing how to do it exactly correct freeze you so you don't do anything at all. I'm going to delete this back and paste that in. Okay. Now you can see that that's going to be way too long because that's pretty wordy text, okay? So I'm going to shrink this down, holding down shift so it does not distort, so it matches the length of basil. Keep it inside the box. Um, that's about right, about 151. Okay, 150.70. That's pretty good. Okay. You know what? I'm going to be 100% honest. I want to capitalize the B. Just my personal opinion. Okay, there we go. I think that looks a little bit better. And there you have it. So that should be pretty cool. Move it up. We do want some. Now, another thing I would check on, we don't want to make this too small. Depending on the size of your printer, you're going to want to check this out. I'm bringing out a cube, and I'm going to click it, and I'm going to type in the dimensions of one, press tab, and type in the other dimension of one. And then, you know, you can kind of squish it down. Now, what this is going to do is I can go through and check and make sure that nothing in my design is going to be less than one millimeter. And it looks like it's really good. For mine, it's going to be fine because... You know, you could do less than one millimeter, but most printers are going to struggle, um, and you're, it's going to be hard to see if you if you don't if you go any smaller than that. So you can see just using this as a reference point in my design. Yeah, nothing's going to get too far. And if it doesn't, you know, that's if it does go a little smaller than that, your printer most printers can print very thin, but it's going to be like one wall thick, and then it gets a little bit tricky. Um, so now you can see the height on these are way off. Um, what I'm going to probably do is I'm going to probably make the sign itself, the part that's going to stick in the ground, three millimeters thick, and I want the text to stick up well above that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with 10 millimeter tall text. So I'm just going to grab the basil and I'm going to squish it down to 10 millimeters tall. I'm going to grab the scientific name and put that up to 10 millimeters. So there we have that. That should be about right. I hear my dog in the background there, little bandit, his name is. And now what I'm going to do now, again, for mine, I like it when the text kind of hangs out and like explodes off the side of the design. So let's get back to a top group, a gear, uh, view and make sure that you're in this ortho, uh, orthographic uh, view. And first of all, I'm going to squish this sign down to three millimeters thick or three millimeters rather. And there we go. Let's move this in here. Now, you can see, where am I limited to? My sign has to. It's got to go at least up. I want to catch this part of the O over here. So let's put it right here. And you, you make sure that in that dimension, it's going to catch that part, OK? Now, how tall does it need to be? Well, let's see. So let's see, put that up. And it's got to catch a, a big chunk of this as well. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to stretch it out down this way. Um, and again, remember, we want to stay within the bounds of what our printer can actually reproduce, whatever we can, whatever we can print. If we can't print it, it doesn't do us a whole lot of good. Okay. And there it is. So I'm going to make mine, since I have a little bit extra to play with, I'm going to make mine a bit longer so that this sign actually has some leeway to stick up, um, up out of the soil so I can actually read it. There we go, something like that. And now I'm going to go down here, and we are going to grab the, oh, where did it go? Where does it go? Oh, they've changed it. They got rid of the roof, didn't they? Oh, no, they didn't. Here it is. I'm going to grab the roof. Now we need to do some rotation here. First of all, I'm going to grab it, and, and this is going to make the stake part that actually sticks into the soil, right? I'm going to rotate it. 
and make sure you keep it, see the circle, if you put it on the inside, you can rotate it so it stays um, on these big ones. We want it to go to 90 degrees, oh, negative 90 they call it. And then I'm going to rotate it this way. And bear with me if you can't tell what I'm doing here. It helps to zoom in so that that doesn't get in the way. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. And if we look at this, this is what? 44 millimeters? And again, do you have to match mine exactly? No, your text and, and your scientific name, it might dictate that you use different dimensions, but you're getting the idea here. And look at that, it's all the way down here. I need to raise that up so it's on the correct plane. See that zero means it's on the build plane uh, with the rest of my stuff. And now I'm gonna just type in some dimensions here. This is gonna be 44. Get a top view so this is matched up correctly. You could use the align tool for this as well, if you wanted to. You can see those are kind of grayed out, so it means it's all in alignment. I got it right that first time. I'm just going to kind of stretch it. Um, something like that. Yeah. OK, cool. So there's my garden plant sign. Now, we're going to use another technique. Now, if that looks like, oh, man, you won't be able to see it because that text, don't worry. And this is one we're going to use. Um, filament swapping technique, right? If you can pause your printer. If not, you can't do that. It's fine. You can just actually go over this with a marker on top. But I'm going to use a filament swap to make this part print first. And then once it gets up into the meat of it, all the text, then I'm going to swap the filament out for something lighter that stands out a little bit better. All right. So there we go. I got myself one. And you can see how much did I worry about how big all this stuff was? Well, you know, you might want to check like, OK, so that thing going into the ground, if you got a ruler, or in this case, I got a digital caliper, a dirty one. This one needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And you know, you can kind of just see like 50. Okay, that's about two inches. So you know, that's that's gonna be plenty, the part that sticks into the ground. This is gonna be a pretty big one. How wide is it? Pretty wide sign. This is gonna be pretty big, but that's okay. I have lots of room in my little flower pot out there. But I think, you know what? Yeah, I think we're gonna go with this right now the way it is. So what I'm gonna do at the end is group this all together. Grab it all at once and press the group button up here at the top. And now it moves around together. I got to make sure that there's no little pieces hanging off because if it's not connected in one continuous part, when you print it, guess what? When you scrape it off, there's no magical uh, force field holding it together or anything like that. You know, it's just going to come apart into two separate pieces. And I'm not sure we want that. So again, I want to stress that if you can think of anything cooler to do with this, Maybe put your name on it or whatever. I don't know. Because maybe, maybe different people have different plants in, in your garden. Different people are growing. You could put the name of that person or whatever using similar techniques to what I've shown you here. But you know what? I don't want to make this too long. So I'm just going to go with this one right here. And of course, what do we need to do next? We've got to export our shape. So now that it's all in one piece and we've drug it around, it moves around, we're sure it fits on our printer. And again, remember, if your printer, if you're really pushing the limits of your printer, what it can do, you might want to consider rotating it to better fit your printer. I'm fine. I'm well within the confines of what my printer is capable of. All right. So there we have it. And now we're going to go to export. Um, I should just be able to export everything in the design. You could do, the, you know, let's just do the selected shape. Why not? downloading the model. And remember in Tinkercad, since it's all web-based, it's going to come to you as a download, the STL file. All right. So next up, what we're going to do is we are going to slice this up and get it on the printer. All right. So now I have my slicer software opened up and I'm going to import my design, the STL. Now yours is, might be different than this. Maybe just drag it out or whatever. But there it is. And you can see because I paid attention earlier, this should fit just fine right on here. I'm going to check my processes, and I've already kind of reviewed these. Everything looks good here. And we're going to go ahead and get this thing ready to go. And so I'm going to go ahead and save my G code. Press prepare to print. Two hours and 46 minutes. So, OK, so now I'm in here, and I have um, I've selected the two filaments I'm going to use. This is protopasta. They, I really like them because they're made right here in my home state of Washington, down in Vancouver. I took a tour of their factory, 
And this is some imperfect pasta from them, which is, happens to be like a green with some sparkles. And then this is actually their Glitter Flake Winter Blue. It's really cool. It had, it's kind of translucent. You can kind of see through it a bit. And it has little sparkles in there. So now I'm going to load this uh, filament up. So now I've got it all loaded up. And I've loaded in the G-code in the SD card slot. And we're going to get this printing. The first color I'm going to do is the green. So we're going to use a green. And then we're going to switch to the blue once it gets up past that first part. So let's get the first part going as it heats up. So you can see that the main body down here is all finished and we're just working on the text. So I'm going to pause the print at this point and do a filament change. Okay, so we're back and we have changed. Oh. So you can really start to see this second color uh, building up and um, looking pretty good so far. moment of truth we're going to put the sign in the soil and that looks absolutely great right here next to the basil hey bandit stealing the water and it's like a hundred and five degrees out right now so I'm gonna actually water these things these poor plants getting really hot out here but you can see looks great right here next to the basil All right, so now that we're finished with this project, I'm really actually pretty happy with this. Um, it just makes my property and makes my little flower pot out there just a little bit better than it was before. And uh, you know, if I do a whole bunch of little tiny things to make the place around here better, then in the end it adds up to something really significant. First of all, before we go any further, I wanna thank everybody who got me up to that, uh, that little milestone of the 1000 subscriber mark. Thanks for sticking with me. I've kind of uh, neglected the channel for a bit, but I'm going to try to get back after it. Once I saw I hit 1,000, uh, it really kind of motivated me to get back at it and start making some videos again. Um, if anybody could do me a favor, I would really appreciate it if you would like. Give me a subscribe if you're if you're not already subscribed. And the best thing would be to share this on social media. Maybe, maybe some other friends who are gardeners who also have a 3D printer might want to do this. It's a really simple project. And, you know, I plan on making some more of these. Um, I'm going to put one of these at the, at the base of my crab apple tree, I believe. Um, and I'm going to probably make each one just a little bit different. But anyways, thanks again. And hopefully I'll see you real soon. Try to, try to get back at it on this channel.